We must have a passionate why. We must have a why that disturbs us because if not, we fall back into old patterns. There's no way around it. It's easy to get in a hypnotic rhythm of life to look and say, I want those other things, but not actually go after it. To try and then you retreat back to where you were. What gets you uncomfortable is when your why is so strong, you can't ignore it. It is so loud. It is so embedded in your heart that even when you feel like you can't, you know you must. That's how we take courageous, uncomfortable action. It's how we move forward. So why are you listening to me? Why do you want more income, love, passion, joy? Why do you want to launch a coaching program, a course, write a book, do a podcast? Why? Why? Keep asking why? Why? When you feel tingly, when the hair stands up on your arms or a tear builds up in the corner of your eye, that's when you're on to something. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because I need them. Because I don't always wake up and feel motivated to go take on the day. And the thing that saves me, that helps me every day is being around people who are thinking bigger, who are changing the world. And it gives me a little more inspiration to go after my mission. And so I hope this video helps you go after yours today too. So today the song from one of the best, Dean Graziosi, and my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two is take uncomfortable action. Every time an entrepreneur overcomes obstacles, um, gets through a tough time, gets through a challenge in life, gets through the naysayers, gets through the own, your own self-limiting beliefs, right? We all have that imposter syndrome that lives in us that, you know, if you made it, you're afraid you're not gonna keep it, and then if you lose it, you don't think you can ever get it back. And I love watching entrepreneurial journeys because if you're listening or watching right now, you're either at a place where you want to do your own thing or, and go to another level, or you're, you're doing well, but you know that you were meant for more. God designed you for more <clears throat> and you haven't tapped into your full potential. And I think every time someone like you spends the time to do a podcast, to do interviews, to do events, you're showing people what's possible. Yeah. So I commend you for, for choosing this path. It's, it's something uh, I got the Thank bug you. 25 years ago. I've been in this self-education industry 25 years. Uh, showing people just uh, ways that we discover, right? We don't have the answers to everything, but when you find the answers, you allow people the shortcut to go from where they are to where they want to be. And if you're watching, that means that you have a desire to be someplace else. Really think about this. This simplifies everything. If you have a desire to go from where you currently are to another level of income, impact, freedom, family time, husband time, wife time, religious time, spirituality time, if you have that desire, the only thing missing from where you are to where you want to be What's in between you is a gap and what's missing is the capabilities to get there. So the first thing is you got to find the capabilities. That's why you listen to a podcast like this, go to events, read books, you, you gain new capabilities. First part is gaining capabilities. Secondly, make sure you're learning it from the person that's actually been there. There's a lot of people that have, are well-intended, but they don't have the depth and breadth. Yeah. So the first is gain the capabilities from someone who's actually already walked the walk, talked the talk, been through the path, already failed, and they're on the other side. The third thing, and this is the most important one, don't just be a listener. Don't be someone who gets addicted to podcasts, addicted to courses, addicted to going to live events, addicted to the way it makes you feel. You must, must, must get addicted to the uncomfortable action it takes to actually be successful. Knowledge alone doesn't do crap. It doesn't do shit, for lack of a better word. So learn from someone who's actually been there, gain the capabilities that fill the gap from where you are to where you want to be, and then you got to take uncomfortable action. And it's scary. It's always scary moving forward. Now, of course, I'll give a little context of my background, but this isn't about me. If we're going to take the time, if you're going to take an hour to be with us, it's about you. And what I also want to tell you is take what serves you from this conversation and throw the rest away. You're not going to, maybe everything I share or we share today might not fit, but there's going to be one thing, five things that, that sink in. If that's the case, if there's something I say, something that triggers, you need to write it down, put a star next to it, and then take some kind of action that creates momentum that it becomes real. Because here's what I know about being in this business for 25 years. <clears throat> the only difference between those who actually go on and live the life they desire, become the man or the woman God designed them to be, are the ones that take the action. And I sometimes watch too many people feel great about receiving the knowledge. Yeah. And it's simply just not enough. Rule number three is be a good role model. What new lessons have you learned that you recently applied to in your businesses? First off, man, you know how to get right to my heart. Yeah, my little boy, Luca, he's, he's so darn cute. You know, um, so are you asking how being a dad helped with my business? 
I love questions yeah. that I don't typically get, man. So really great Absolutely. question. And here's the cool part is I have a 14 year old and a 12 year old and I was a little older when I had then. I was, I was 38 and 40 when I had my older kids and now I'm 52 and have a, I have a 13 month old. And I'll tell you what it helps. And, and this being a parent in general helps the same when it melts over or runs over into your business. And, and so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna back up a little bit and tell you what this year, this New Year's uh, theme for my older kids, and it'll be the same for my younger son, Luca, is one of the themes for the year is, who are you when no one's watching? And I think that is such a powerful thing when it comes to business, because in today's business world, we're in the transaction, we've been in the transactional world for too long, and the world has evolved to relationship businesses. Right, especially in the knowledge industry, the information age, the digital economy, right? You wanna do business with someone you have a relationship with, that you know, like, and trust, that you feel they have your back, you feel they care about you. They don't just have a transaction, they're done and, and next, right? It's like the restaurant where the owner comes over and says, hey, how's your meal? You sure it's good? Can I get you anything? Are you sure it's the right temperature compared to just throwing you food and whether it's good, bad, or otherwise? So I'm backing up a little bit. What my kids have made me realize that Kids don't do or become who you tell them to come become. Your kids become a version of you. So I step up my game as a better, I, I wanna be a better human, I wanna be a better example, I wanna be a better husband, I wanna be a better father, a better man, a better leader every day because my children are watching. Even my, my 13 month old son, he stares at me every day. I'm, my wife does all the work and I get all the attention. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. He loves me to death and he looks at me with his big saucer eyes and I know that he will become the man that I am. So I, I transcended that and I want you to think about that in any business you're starting. So many times in life when we're starting a business, we say we're doing everything, it's just not working. But are we really? Like, I wanna know, and this is the conversation I had with my older kids, like, when no one's watching, are you studying marketing? Are you studying sales? Are you going through the right courses? Are you doing the right things? Or are you binging out on Netflix or surfing online, right? When you say you're working night and day, but you're really going out three nights a week, drink until two o'clock in the morning, have a hangover till 12, and you tell your friends, yeah, my business just isn't working. Are you really doing the things that you need to be doing when no one's watching? Because as a, as a parent, and I'll go back and forth, as a parent of my older kids that are 12 and 14, let's just be honest, they could watch porn on their phone, they could drink, they could sneak away, they could take pills, they could do anything. 14 is the new 40, it's insane, right? Mm -hmm. So what I told my kids is, I'm probably never gonna know if you do stuff behind my back, but you'll know. And you'll know when we sit at the dinner table and you look at me in the eye and you're hiding something, you won't feel connected to me and it'll suck. Rule number four is face your fears. Tim Ballard dedicated the last 15 years of his life to help end childhood sex slavery. Slavery and in the sex world. It's unbelievable. It's one of those difficult things to even say out loud, difficult things to mention. A lot of times it's so hard, people have to look away when it needs us to stare right into it and solve this problem. He said there's over 7 million children in slavery they don't own their lives and it's evolving to organ harvesting. I know, hard to hear, I get it, but we can't fix it until we face it. He had to face that. Tim had to face the fear of doing this on his own, of what if he failed? He had an amazing wife and he's got eight children uh, and his wife pushed him to take that uncomfortable action and thousands and thousands of Children in slavery would never have been rescued without him taking that uncomfortable action. But while he was in it, and sometimes when you overcome the first obstacles to get started, to get the momentum, then other things happen in the midst of his career. Someone tried to attack him to figure that uh, he probably, he, this couldn't be a guy that just had a good heart. He's got to have something sneaky. They looked under the hood for two years and found out he's just a good guy trying to help a really ugly thing. But in that moment, of that thing that you must face, those insecurities. You know, he found a time where he just completely lost it. Um, he had to face the fears of not being good enough, that what if he couldn't do this at the level? Did he make a mistake? 
and it crippled him for a while. He couldn't move. He he self, was self-doubt and wanted to quit. The reason I'm bringing this up is he didn't go in detail about it, but I just know these circumstances in our lives. I spent five years thinking about a divorce. Every day I'd wake up thinking about it. I think my previous wife did as well. And it crippled us forever, but I couldn't face that because my parents were married and divorced nine times. I knew the pain of divorce and I didn't want to replicate that in my kids. So I avoided it. And guess what happens when I avoided it? It got bigger and stronger. It was like this ugly that was locked in a cage, but it kept getting bigger and I needed stronger locks on the door. And then finally the door burst open one day and I couldn't control it. I had to face it. It caused stress, it caused anxiety, it caused sleepless nights, but I had to face it. Now I'm tying these all together here. I know it's a little ADD on that one, but I'm tying it all together no matter if it's something you know you need to face or something that comes out of the blue or something where the ugly inside just can't hold anymore and it breaks open and you have to deal with it. What you'll realize on the other side of the fear or the thing you have to deal with is always the next version of you. You don't find deep fulfillment without some deep struggles. You don't find deep joy and pleasure without some, or, or the heights of joy, I should say, and pleasure without the depth of the opposite. Because I went through the pain and anxiety of going through a divorce, it made me realize the man I needed to become to attract the kind of relationship and be the parent I needed to be. And I became a better version of me. I'm married to the love of my life. And we've, it, it never would have happened without that pain. But some of us are not going through the pain. We're avoiding it. I know pain is never fun. If, if Tim didn't avoid the, if P Tim would have avoided the pain of leaving a job, trying to do this on your own, being worried about being attacked and, and people, you know, criticizing him, if he would have worried about that, thousands and thousands and thousands of children wouldn't have been saved from slavery. My whole point of this message today, and I hope you go listen to the Tim Ballard interview, I hope you go to the movie, is simply this. There are some things you have to face today. You've been avoiding them. It's time to face them. Your next level lives on the other side of you facing them. And I can't promise that they'll be better in a moment, but I promise they'll be better. And I can promise you this, if you don't face them, things will stay the same. And if you're not happy with the same thing, then it's time to change. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free there's a link in the description below go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business i'll see you there rule number five is keep growing what do you do to keep going and and stay focused what do you get that courage I, for from? me i look at the alternative i don't want to be the guy that used to be successful i don't want to be the guy that used to take care of his family i don't want to be the guy that had lost dreams used to I don't want to be the used to. That guy used to have a plane. That guy used to be successful. I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the guy that's growing. And when you find, when that shifts into, and I learned this from Tony, when it, when it shifts into contribution, when it shifts into growth, like I just, I'm fighting to be a better version of me. Listen, yeah. I was divorced. I'm not an advocate of divorce, but I went through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't her fault. It was a combo of both of us. Yeah. I take full responsibility for my first relationship not working out. And it was really stressful because I worried about my kids so much, right? You know what it's like to be a parent? Yeah. I thought of seeing my kids half the time. Oh my God, like I was panicked. But where I found comfort is not only did we part amicably as friends, but I found an opportunity to grow. And what I was... I'm sharing this has nothing to do with real estate or making money, but really it does. Yeah. When I ended the relationship, instead of saying, ah, screw her, that was, let me go find someone that could fill me. Because I'm in this growth mindset, because I'm in, not in just significance and money, but I want to be a better version of me, I stopped for a moment and said, I don't want to bring the same bad habits and the shit that screwed up the first relationship into the next one. Yeah. And if I want to attract the woman of my dreams, I better be the man of someone else's dreams. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not just her, it's about me. And I worked on me.
Rule number six is have clarity. Overwhelm is a symptom of a bigger problem. Lack, and I want you to write this down. Overwhelm happens when you don't have a clear cut vision or clarity on what you really want. Because when you know what you really want, it's easy to say no to the things that don't bring you towards, remember binary thinking? Does it bring me towards what I want or does this activity bring me away from what I want? If you have clarity on what you want, saying no happens just like that. Lack of a clear defined target, a timeline. How do you know when you're winning the game if you don't have a goal with a timeline? If you don't have a scorecard, right? You could say, I wanna make more money next year. What the heck does that mean? When are you gonna start? What are you gonna do today? What are you gonna do tomorrow? We, so many times we don't have a deadline, so put a deadline on it, t- clear timeline. We have lack of focus. We're easily distracted, phones and social media. How many times have you gone in to check your bank account and two hours later you popped your head out of the computer, out of your little phone and your neck hurt? You're like, wow, why is my neck hurt? Because you've been looking down for two hours at stupid stuff on Facebook, on fake news or whatever, or gossip. We're easily distracted. Rule number seven is lean into your full potential. In regards to the last year, the world has obviously shifted tremendously in regards to how we do business. And I really want to talk about that for a moment. During that time, um, if I recall correctly, you and Tony have been able to impact more people than ever before over the last year. But can you talk about the transition and, you know, maybe feeling a little scared at first and how you were able to adapt and handle that and really shift the model into this coming the new economy here? Yeah, think about this. When the world shifts, right? And listen, I've been saying this, but I want to say it to you right now if you're listening. If you're a little uncertain, a little scared, a little unsure where to go, congratulations for being human. Just being in business for yourself or going into business is scary alone at any time in history. Compound COVID and race relations and shifts and and such a, a... In America, especially, such a shift on both sides. It's ugly. It's been a crazy year. So... If it's been crazy for you, you know, you're human. But know that this is also the time where we could step up as role models, as leaders, and lean into our full potential. If we wanna fix the economy of the world, we fix the economy in our homes and the people around us. If we wanna help with race and connections and bonding people, we need to do those things in our home, in our community with the people we love. That's how we fix. Nobody's coming to save us. No one's waving a magic wand. It's all on us. And I think it's so liberating when you decide it's all on us. But with that said, So you're a little scared anyway, rightfully so. The world is shifting. You know you kind of got to shift. But I believe, Nick, when, when the world shifts, like you just said, our subconscious, and maybe we're wired this way, kind of makes us say, you know what, let me just see where things are going. I'm uncertain, I'm a little scared, let's see how it plays out. And I think, I think we're designed to see how things play out when it's absolutely the worst thing you can do. You know, I, I, I quote this a lot, so excuse me if you've heard this, but you know, I love the mini book, Who Moved My Cheese, right? And, and if you really just break it down, two mice, they're getting cheese every day in the same spot, all of a sudden the cheese starts com- stops coming. One mouse is like, hey, this, this is where I get my cheese. I deserve my cheese. Someone better bring my cheese back and I'm gonna wait here until they do. The other mouse is like, uh, I don't think the cheese is coming. I'm gonna go explore. Exploring is scary. That's uncomfortable action. That's uncertain action. That's imperfect action. But it's also courageous action. We must go explore. We must pivot. Though it's extremely uncomfortable, the mouse that just sit there is gonna you know, starve to death. And we have to realize that, that the world has shifted and it may never go back. Mm-hmm. So that, there's like a tactical side and then the up, upstream side of emotions. The tactical side, you know, you wanna be in something that is growing, that is, people are shifting into, right? If you wanna go into an industry that's, that's being fueled by, a, a, um, by virtual connection, right? We're socially distanced, what industries are virtually connected? We want that. We wanna make sure we're shifting into something growing. We don't wanna shift into Blockbuster or shift into the taxi cab business, right? We wanna shift to where things are going. Rule number eight is do what you love. I saw some older videos um, that you did and it almost looks like right now, not only you look, but it seems like you feel younger than you were 10 or 20 years ago. Like you have that extra energy that, I don't know where you're getting it from, but is there something that has to do with that? Yeah, a couple things. Well, first off, um, I love what I do for Cause, cause I, and, and I want to because I want to yeah. be like that like, yeah. like like 10 years from now or like I, I won that secret so yeah make sure you so guys I'll get t- that so I'll tell you 
I'll tell you a couple things. One, I truly love being in love with my wife. And what I realized is just what you said, what you guys have is proximity. Yeah. You were coming out here, you could have come alone. You could have spent an extra night here and said, hon, I'm gonna try to go to dinner with Dean and I'm gonna stay in You could have. You chose proximity. And the, since the day I met my wife, I don't go anywhere without her. Mm. And that was Tony's advice. He, said, he literally said to me, when you get the right woman and I know you're gonna and you're gonna find love and he used to, he'd take his big hand and put it on my chest. He's like, this heart, this body's full of love. You are, a, he, what he said, you are a love something. You're, love something, he said, you are full of it. And when you find the woman that matches that love and he's got his hand on my chest, he said, don't let her out of your sight. Proximity is power. Yeah. Because you get to go on stage and there's 20,000 people. You wanna look over and see the love of your life yep. staring at you. I always do that. And that, that I took that advice. So I, so I love the thought of, I want to do what everybody says you can't. I dated a lot too. Mm -hmm. So I'll just leave it at Italian that. Italian Mexicans are good at that. I, I dated a lot. Yeah. And I didn't know if there was an opportunity to really feel that way about one woman. I have to tell you, probably until I met my wife, I was probably like, I'll just be a good dad yeah, and yeah. date like crazy. Like, and when I met my wife, I went from someone that wouldn't be faithful probably to I'd rather die before I'd be unfaithful to my wife. Yeah. And because of that, and she feels it, she truly falls in love with me or every day. I didn't even know it was possible. I know right now you're probably like, I'm listening to this, I listen to Alberts, I wanna make money. This guy's talking about how much he loves his wife. But I'm telling you, all these little pieces. You they ask help, me why I'm excited? Yeah. You know why I'm excited? Because I've proven five years in that I could fall in love with this woman more and she falls in love with me. I've proven that as though I thought, though I, thought I was a good dad, I wanna be better. Now I got a little 19 month old. Um, my daughter's gonna be 15 tomorrow. Wow. Um, we're trying for more babies. I'm excited to be a next level dad. Yeah. I'm excited that Tony Robbins and I have partnered in three different companies and we're really making an impact on the world. I mean, the guy's been doing it for 45 years, yeah. there's nobody better, but I'm making more of an impact in helping people in a time of chaos and craziness. The outside world's out of freaking control. Yeah. And the only way to control it is get the inner game. Yeah. And I love the fact that we're helping people with their inner game. So maybe if you interview me, and it'll never be different about my family. Yeah. But I always love the thing I'm in so much that it drives me to the next level. Rule number nine is be disciplined. There is no victory without discipline. Now I want to tell you something. I, the word discipline is hard for me even to write. I, create that, I created that slide, uh, that thought, and I'm like, discipline, man, I'm really not that disciplined. Or I, I don't like the word, I didn't like discipline in school, I didn't like discipline uh, from parents, I don't like discipline from anybody, but I am pretty disciplined. And the right kind of discipline changes your life. So let's talk about discipline. Your life is the sum total of your days, okay? And your days are the sum total of your actions. You can put that slide up for a minute, Mike, so people can see this and write it down. Your days are the sum total of your act daily actions. Your daily actions are the result of your daily habits. So here's the big question. Do you have million dollar habits or do you have hundred dollar habits? That's a big question. Do you have million dollar habits or do you have hundred dollar habits? Product habit, productivity habit number three. If you're not conscious of your daily habits and actions, you are under someone else's control or something else's, someone else or something else. If we apply binary thinking to this statement, you're either free or you're enslaved. Cultivating discipline is not that hard once you stop listening, excuse the words, BS, and just decide to do it. Okay, let's go back to me. That was an example on real estate. For example, if, if you're in the real estate world, you could say, I'm not making offers because the, the market's too fast. There's no good deals where I live. I'm not going to the gym because I'm so damn busy at work. There's just no time. I haven't registered that URL or started that online business or started selling that product on Amazon yet because, because, because we create all these BS example, BS stories in our, in our head that stop us. So how do we cultivate discipline? Figure out the stuff. Think about this. Discipline. This is just a different way of going deep on your clarity. Figure out the stuff that's actually important to do. Your marketing, selling, buying, starting, right? What is it that you want more of in your life right now? What is it you want? 
You want your first real estate deal? What should you be doing? You want to start that new company? What should you be doing? Better relationship? What should you do? What's important? People say they want a new relationship, but they ignore talking to their spouse for two years straight. What's important? Decide to just do that. Stick to the damn schedule. Schedule the day. Stick to the damn schedule. Have a hard end time. Have a hard end with deadlines, right? Again, how do you know you're winning the game unless there's a score? There's a, in a basketball game, there's a timer, right? And then the game's over. Baseball game, football game, life, there's a timer. But we don't put a timer on our next level. If we go more than two hours straight, a lot of times we'll get fried. I don't mean you can't work 10 hours. I have a lot of days, way over 10 hours. But two hours, put in hard two hours. I'm going to evolve to this thinking, evolve two hours. And then take a break. Go take a walk, meditate, work out, stretch, walk around the block. Get in, you know, do yoga, anything. Just take a little break in between two hours. You get drained and you're not working in flow. You're not getting stuff done. Uh, it's pretty unsustainable to get more than five hours of really productive work. I'm not saying you can't work 10, 12 hours. I do, but I'm talking productive work. Five hours in a day is real. So really, we got to identify the stuff that we need to be doing that we're just, let's talk about money today, that's making us money and the stuff that just does not make us money and define what can we cram into those hours where we're gonna be most productive. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips, is just do it. Fast action, just do it, right? I love the Nike commercial, just do it. Or her, or I forget what her tagline is, but it's something along those lines of just doing it. But that's easier said than done, isn't it? What the heck can get you to take faster action? You're listening to me right now. There's some things you've been thinking about for a long time, but you're still not doing it. So how could today be the day that you actually do it? I mean, it's, it's, it's easier said than done, right? Just, just do it. Stop thinking about it. What are you doing thinking? Just go. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. But some of you feel like you're in the airplane and the instructor has you at the when the door that's open, you got the parachute on your back and they're trying to push you out the door and you're like, I'm just not jumping. I know I got a parachute. I know I'll be fine. I know the plane, maybe the plane's even crashing, but you still don't want to jump out. I get that feeling. So how do we get rid of that feeling? How do we take that bold, uncomfortable action? I thought of a few things that I've used in my life is first off, what is the action you need to take today? You go back to your why, right? Why do you want it? But what is the action? Is it quitting the job, starting the company, having that hard communication with the, with the significant other, to get your butt to the gym, to eat better? I, I don't know what it is in your life to, to start the marketing, to make the phone call, to go live on, coach, co uh, on social, to, to do your first coaching. I don't know what it is, but you do. And what if you stop saying you're going to do it soon or next week or next month and you decided, I'm going to do that thing tomorrow, this weekend, Monday, by lunch, at the latest. How? What? Here's what I would challenge you to do. First off, I would remind yourself of the why. So grab a piece of paper and like, why the hell am I even listening to an Own Your Future podcast or a part of Mastermind or part of Project Next or part of whatever it is that we do? Or just being here today. Why would I listen to this stuff? Why? There is a deeper reason why. Keep asking yourself why. Write it down. Secondly, what is the fast action? And write the word fast, not just action. What is the fast? You can write bold. You can write courageous. You can write uncomfortable, but it's action. What is the action I need to take that I've been postponing for too long? Yes, no, maybe. I do. I won't. I can't. I must. I don't. Then, I want you to write down, if you take that action, what is the best case scenario? Really think through it. Pretend it's six months from now, three months from now, you did it. What is the best case scenario? And write it out in detail. What does it look like? And then I want you to do me a favor. I want you to put yourself in that position and really visualize that it happened. 
that that best outcome happened. And I want you to attach an emotion to it. What does it feel like that you did it? That you said, I do, I can't, I must, I won't, I will, I did. You made the sale, you did the marketing, you had the hard conversation, you quit the job, you started the company. What is it? And I want you to envision it so much until an emotion comes, then write the emotion down. Is it joy? Is it confidence? Is it freedom? Because if we don't attach an emotion to it, it's just the thought. So I want you to, your why, your fast, uncomfortable action. If you act, what is the best case scenario? And then take a moment, shut off the phone, stop scrolling, stop listening, and visualize you're in that spot and that best thing happened and write down the emotions that come to your heart. Next, I want you to write down what if you don't do it? What if you don't take action? What's the worst case scenario? Just write it down. Things will be exactly the same as they are. I'll still be stuck in this relationship. I'll still be stuck in this job. I won't be coaching people. I won't get on that stage. I won't launch the podcast. I won't create the course. I won't do that mastermind I've always dreamed of. Then I want you to visualize that, out, that outcome, just like you visualize the outcome that if it did happen. I want you to think about it. It's a year from now. I'm still in the same exact spot. Damn it. I knew there's more for me. I should have. I could have. What does that feel like? Visualize. It's a year from now. You didn't take the action. And the worst case scenario is happening. And I want you to put an emotion attached to that. I'll be sad. I'll be depressed. I feel like I'm not living into my full potential. I'll let people down. I'll let myself down. Whatever emotion, there's no right or wrong answer. But we must get that action step and we must visualize what could happen if we take that uncomfortable action. And we also have to do the other side of visualizing doing nothing. Because if you do nothing, you're guaranteed to be exactly where you are, if not worse. Really, at the end of the day, you need leverage to get you to move. Got to get the rocket off the ground. Just do whatever it takes. Once you craft your compelling future, why not read it every day? Why not look at it every single day of your life? Because it's your life and we only got one shot. If you know where you are and you know where you want to go, the third thing is why. If you guys know my journey, but you know this story, this is an exercise I've been doing for 20 years of my life, why? Why are you here? Why do you wanna go from where you are to where you wanna be? Why do you wanna empower your girls, work from home, live into your full potential, why? You see, we, we all think we want what, we know, but a lot of times, especially those of you who are new, sometimes you gotta dig under the hood and really get it out of your head, get out of your head and get into your heart. And when you attach that emotion to the why, oh my God, that's the secret. The secret of this whole thing is stay engaged, learn from people who've already been there, stay engaged, take uncomfortable action, and lead with your heart. Get out of that logical mindset. It's not logical that you could be happy every day. It's not logical that a broke kid from upstate New York with nine marriages and dyslexia and no college could have more success than I could ever imagine possible. It's not logical. Get out of your logical head. Get into your heart. Your heart can accomplish anything. Model those that have already been there. Stay connected and let your heart be your driver, not your thoughts. And when your thoughts do, use all the other stuff we trained and what's in Accelerated Success for me to get the right thoughts but let your heart lead. I wanna talk about the dark side. No, I'm not talking about Star Wars. I'm talking about going wherever it takes to get the momentum you need to move forward. Listen, the hardest part of any journey, the hardest part of starting something new, to launching the business, to starting the new career, it's always the beginning. It's always the launch pad. It's, all, it's always the, the, the rocket getting the first foot off the ground takes so much energy. When it's out in space, you hit the button, whew, the rocket takes off. So how do we get the momentum in a, in a world where we're worried about the American currency? If you live here in America, we're worried about the, the diversity. We're worried about a recession. We have so many things plaguing us 
ever since COVID more than ever, just a magnifying glass on some things that were already there. How do we take that? Plus we have our own insecurities, our own self-doubt, our own imposter syndrome, and you compound the two of them. How do we move forward boldly? Be brave? Well, be brave. How do I just survive? Some of those thoughts go in our head and we have to be able to cut through the noise, cut through and see the path to our next level and then take the uncomfortable action it takes to get there. And sometimes to get the rocket off the ground, to get the momentum, to take bold action, we have to go to the dark side. Well, that's what Tom Bill, you called it. I say we have to put everything in our toolbox that we possibly can to keep moving forward. Listen, I would bet to say, can we just be honest? It is healthier to have a compelling future, to create a vision board, to meditate on a daily basis and meditate with abundance, meditate on who you're becoming, who you want to become, what you're going to achieve. And I am not making fun of any of that. That is all stuff that if you can do and you should do and you, <laughs> it's a, it should be a part of your process and a compelling future is a must. Do it for love. Do it for respect. Do it for freedom. Do it for control of your calendar. Do it for the thing that you want the most. If we look forward, if it was a year from now and it was the best year of your life, what would the best year of your life look like? And use that as fuel. But sometimes it's not enough. Let's be honest. If it was enough, you'd already be there, wouldn't you? Sometimes we give up. Sometimes we don't even realize the day that we stopped fighting for who we are supposed to be and we've settled for who we are. So what is the dark side? Sometimes we got to go on the other side and create the pain in our body of not taking action. What if you don't start the business? What if you don't quit the job that's killing you? What if you don't stop the toxic relationships? What if you don't? Where will you be? Listen, some of it, can we just be really transparent? Some of it's ego. If that's what it takes, use it. Some of it is the pain of being embarrassed of saying you wanted something and not getting, you'll look stupid in front of other people. Use it. Some of his, when you were young, maybe your parents or friends or family said you weren't good enough. You weren't smart enough. You'd never mount to anything. You'd never do your own thing. You're too lazy. You're insecure. That's what Tom's mom told him. He was too lazy. That's painful. Use it. Go to the dark side. So when you think of your goals, that is the number one thing everybody talks about. Instead of setting a goal looking forward, let's pretend it is one year from today and we're back here celebrating and it was the best year of your life. That's the framework in which I would love for you guys to look through setting your goals. Instead of looking forward through a busy life, look backwards at the best year of your life and what had to happen. When I say look backwards and pretend it's the best year of your life, what your brain will automatically go is, oh yeah, I want to be making more money. I want some more freedom. Oh, I want to lose that 10 pounds. Oh, I want to get the intimacy back in my relationship. That still, I want to be really, I know it sounds like I'm splitting hairs. You're still looking forward of what you wish could happen. I've trained my brain over the last two decades that when I do this exercise, and, and we don't have to do it right here, when you do this exercise, it's not about looking what you hope to happen. It's about saying it already happened and how do you feel looking backwards, meaning Put yourself in that spot. And if it's visualization, if it's a little quiet time, if it's reflecting, if it's why you take a walk, if it's in your shower, when you're meditating, whatever it is, picture it. Like I literally can, I literally can spend time thinking about where I'm gonna be in a year from now. And I can literally get goosebumps and I can feel it as if it exists right now. You know, people talk about manifesting and all. It is manifesting. You gotta do the work. It's not about just dreaming it and hope it happens. I'm not a believer in that. A lot of people say you set the intention, the universe will deliver. Bullshit. You have to set it up and you actually have to do the work. You can't just say, oh, I'd like to have a million dollars in my bank account. Let me go back to my old habits of surfing on the internet and watching Netflix and hope that million dollars shows up. No, we gotta, we gotta do the work. So we'll get a little deeper, but the first thing is, is we must have that compelling future of our own designed. And for me, I literally can put myself in this place. And I remember writing down, okay, this is what mastermind has to look like. And I remember writing down 100 miles and oh, we're gonna do a big launch and we're gonna call it the knowledge business blueprint. And I remember writing it down and I was writing down as if it already happened. 
I literally, if you could see the hair on my arms, is standing up right here because I can visualize, because I've been practicing this for so long, that I visualize it and I see it. That is a great practice. Then once we see it, then the part that I think has to happen, as soon as I was done visualizing, I didn't go, done, I dreamed it up. No, then I got my ass to work. Like, who do I need to learn from to do this? Who do I have to model? What patterns of successful people who've already done this that I can model and do in teaching this? And then I started making the list of what I had to get done so that fantasy could become a reality. This might sound like, this is what everybody does, but do we... We all agreed if we eat better and work out more, we'd be in better shape, but most of us want to be in better shape, but we don't eat better and we don't work out more. So a lot of us want to be next level successful and we're looking for something else magically to come along and it's not gonna. We have to visualize what it is we want to be and if it was the best year of our lives, we have to get as detailed as possible. Remember, fuzzy targets don't get hit. Don't just say, I want to be a coach making a million dollars a year. What does that mean? What kind of coach? How many coaching sessions? How many clients do you need? Listen, if you said, I want to be a coach and I want to make a million dollars a year and you were sitting with me and I was consulting for you, I'd reverse engineer it. How many people, how much do you make per person, right? If you say, I can make, you know, uh, it's $10,000 a year per person. Okay, so that means you need 100 clients. Okay, you need 100 clients over 12 months. It's gonna take you, first month, you might only get five. So if you get five the first month, and then the second month is seven, and the third month is, is 20, how many do you need to get? I would lay out, all right, first month, five, second month, 12, third month, I need 22, and I'd have a freaking goal every month on how I could get there, and nothing would stop me. I would go back to what I teach you guys. I'd know my why. I'd have my compelling future. I already visualized it. I knew how I feel once I made a million dollars being a coach. I know how, I would visualize how the people I'm coaching's lives would change. I would think about if I'm saving marriages or helping people eat better or learn how to sell or learn how to go vegan or, or a million other things. I would think about the lives I'm changing and I would literally craft the plan saying, okay, a million dollars as a coach. Okay, I need a hundred clients. That's an average of 10-ish, 8-ish a month, right? Whatever that is. I might not get as many the first one, so I gotta stack up the other months. And then I'd say, okay, what is my plan to get the first five in January? And I would craft the plan to get my five $10,000 coaching sessions in January. And that would be my whole obsession. And if I got four, well shit, I gotta get an extra one in February. If I got six, I'm like, I'm ahead of the game. Let's bust it in February and let's keep this little cushion that I have. When you worry, it robs you of your full potential. I want you to get really upset with worry right now. Think about in your life the things that you've worried about that didn't come true, that caused you a lot of angst and anxiety. Did you, have you ever been in a relationship that you worried about for years? Have you worried about a job for years? Have you worried about things going wrong for years? Did you worry about the last presidential election and what it was gonna do to you? Did you worry about when the economy shifted? Even if you got hit bad. I'm bringing this up because worry has robbed so much of your life even if you're not the person considered a worry wart. It just has. And when you think of it that way, I want you to get disturbed and pissed at worry because we get to create what goes on in our lives. I know that's a big statement, but our consciousness, whatever, if you want to use the word consciousness, our thoughts, what we think about on a daily basis, whatever word terminology that fits you, that's what causes us stress and worry or what causes us to focus on another level. So what has worry cost you? And I, I, you know, I'm, this is casual. We're all sitting here today, and I, wanna, I, wanna, I encourage you to write down some of the things in your life that worry has cost you. What, what did you worry about that didn't come true? What did you worry about that did come true and you were still okay? What did you worry about that came true? It sucked going through it, but when you looked on the other side, you wouldn't change it for anything in the world because it made you a better person. It made you stronger, faster, quicker. Where is the smoothest stone in the stream? It is always, always in the roughest part of the stream. Right? Those who stand at the rocks that are on the sidelines never get any water on them. They're fine, but they're rough. 
You want to live abundantly, you need to jump in the toughest part of the stream. Worry is gonna happen. Make an impact. And that's what I consider being success. Success isn't just the money. You know, I, I have to tell you, and do you mind if I share, I hope, I hope you don't think I'm bragging. I don't tell anybody, I don't take pictures. But 10 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago, I got invited by somebody, now maybe 15 years ago, I got invited to go on a private plane. I don't know, I honestly don't know how long ago. It could have been 20 years ago. And it was somebody that was really wealthy. And I was, I, I'm like, I came from a kid that was in a trailer park and I was already in business and I was already doing well, but nothing like that. And I flew on this plane and it was like, you just drive your car to the plane. You drive right out on the tarmac. I, I'm in shock. You get out of your car, you take three steps, you walk up into the plane, it takes off, you land. And when you land, your rental car is waiting at the bottom of the steps. I'm like, holy crap. This is unbelievable. There's food on the plane. There's a bathroom on the plane. It's like, this is ridiculous. This can't be possible. And I remembered that plane. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm buying one of these someday. I'm gonna buy it after I hit certain criteria, after I saved enough, after I gave enough away. I'm buying one of these. And I've chartered since then. I've probably phoned, phoned mostly private, I don't know, 10 years. I, don't I never talk, you never hear me talk about this. Look, look at this, some of, us, some of you I have a relationship with for seven to 10 years. Never shared this. I don't, that's why I, I don't want you to respect me because I got a big house and a plane. I want you to respect me for my heart, my feeling and how I got here. And that's what I hope, I hope I share that with you guys. You see a lot of people, go on your Facebook right now. I guarantee there's somebody holding a half a million bucks in their hand and someone else in front of their Lamborghini and someone else showing off their watch, right? You never see that with me. I wear a, pretty much a gray t-shirt today. It's a very special day. I have a greenish gray shirt on. It's a special day right here. I digress. I was on that plane probably 15, 18 years ago. I bought that plane uh, a year ago. But was it easy? No. Have I failed miserably? Yes. Have I doubted myself? Absolutely. Have I felt like an imposter? More than you'll ever know or ever believe. But it's possible. The only thing is we have to stay in the game. We have to find what drives us. We have to keep moving forward. We have to say to ourselves, again, I, know so, I see so many incredible people on here. I know the success you've had. This isn't about you not having success, success up until now. It's about me hopefully helping you get to that next level of success. And listen, I'm at a place where I don't, like, yes, I have a plane. I have, the, I have a beautiful home. But I'm not flashy, I, don't, I drive a Ford pickup truck. By the way, guys, if you lived in Arizona and you saw me at a red light, I drive a white Ford F-150 every day. I do not have any other car. I don't have motorcycles, I don't buy watches. I have a really nice watch on my wrist right now. If you know watches, it's one of the nicest watches out there. It was a present from Tony Robbins from all the work we do together. Or else I'd have a simple old watch or not wear one at all. So I'm really simple in some areas and then I get to do the things that I want, but I wouldn't do any of those things that I want unless I could give at the level I want to give. Net last year, I donated more to charity than ever before in my life. I need to do that, I need to break last year, this year, right? So, that's my message for today is, it's all possible. Dream big, but know we have to put in the work. It doesn't come by accident. There's no magical money machines. You don't invent something today and be rich tomorrow. You don't put a, 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 a page up on mastermind.com on Friday and by Monday there's a million dollars in your account. It's a process. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes work, it takes overcoming your fear, it takes being brave, it takes being courageous. And at the end of the day, I've had an ulcer before as a kid, I've stressed, I've gone broke, I've, I've been ridiculed, I felt bad about myself, I felt insecure, and at the end of the day, I would do it a million times over. I get to be with you amazing people. And here's the thing I know. If I would have stayed and just went into a job and worked for someone else, even though I knew I had more to give the world, and I'm not saying a job is bad, I'm saying the wrong job, right? I still would have failed. I still would have felt like an imposter. I still would have been ridiculed. I st all those things still would have happened, but I would have had someone else with their foot on my head. So if somebody says to me, man, be doing your own thing, going for that next level is scary. Yes, it's even scarier to think that I have to listen, live by someone else's rules for the rest of my life. Think about what's scarier, trying and failing or living by someone else's rules for the rest of your life.
I listen an hour a day, every day of my life, seven days a week. I listen to personal development. I listen to human psychology, positive psychology. I look at history. I, I'm feeding my brain every day. Plus, I get to be partners and best friends with Tony Robbins. And so this is a work in progress. So please know I don't have all the answers. But questions like that, I understand. I like thinking of like the going upstream. And every year of my life, as my knowledge turns into wisdom, I realize, oh, I need to go another layer upstream. You know, my, my dad was diagnosed with diabetes years ago. And when he first got it, they, he got all this freaking medicine. And just because I'm in this philosophy of going upstream, I'm like, well, could we do something to stop the medicine? And, and we obsessed on it and we went upstream. And just a simple analogy, we changed his diet, his sleeping habits, when he ate, how he ate. And within three months, we went back in, diabetes was under control. He hasn't taken medicine in 18 years, right? That's just an upstream philosophy. And what I realized is every time you think you're actually upstream, you're not. You're, you're 10 feet up the stream when there's miles to go right? Um, I love that story. And I don't know where the first time I heard it is. It was about medicals, like doctors being overwhelmed. And it talked about these doctor, these medical doctors and these students in medical school are pulling in a parking lot and there's a stream by the parking lot and there's people drowning and that somebody runs out and saves one and saves the other. And every time a new doctor pulls up, it's the overwhelm of doctors, right? And uh, it's like, come help me, come help me. And they're just as much as they can go out in the stream to pull people out of the river, more people are, are drowning. And finally, one guy pulls up, he looks, he gets back in his car and starts taking off. And the doctor goes, you, you horrible bastard, why are you leaving? He's like, because we're never gonna solve it here. I'm gonna drive upstream and see who's throwing them in and stop it. Mm -hmm. And I've just taken on that philosophy more now than ever that every time I think I got it solved, I'm like, I'm still not all the way upstream. So um, it makes me realize that if you have your back against the wall, your brain is telling you, right, the feeling of an underdog, I've, I've made lots of mistakes, I don't know any way out. Your brain is telling you some ass stories, and we know that, positive story, positive life, you know, get rid of negative beliefs and all that, but sometimes it's just freaking hard. I'm like, I'm drowning. You're telling me not to have a negative thought. I'm, I have 400 pounds on my shoulder and I'm two feet underwater. When people wanna enter the knowledge industry, the self-education industry, sell what they know, the biggest thing they say is, how do I know my niche? How do I know what to sell? Listen, in most cases, what you're selling, the asset, the inventory lives in here, the mess you've been through, the, the evolution you've been through, the passion you have, the skill you have. The fact of the matter is this, you have an experience in life that can help somebody get from where they are to where they wanna be because you've already been through that. So don't get overwhelmed with the delivery system. Identify what problem you could solve for other people. I promise you the internet allows you to tap in to exactly the people you need. I have to tell you, when people tell me marketing is hard, I wanna say, go back when I started, or my friend Tony Robbins started. We had to go in the infomercial business. There was no internet, there was no online, so when we wanted to create a course or a product, we had to get it printed, put it in the warehouse, we had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on TV and have call centers and hope it worked. Marketing has shifted because you have access to the exact people who need your product, your course, your service, your mastermind, your workshop, your coaching program. So many people want to obsess on their product, their service, what they deliver, and you should. You should make it the best in the world so you love what you do. And then they spend five minutes on the marketing and they wonder why it doesn't work. You have to have marketing stamina. Marketing stamina is when you try something, it doesn't work, you try again. When that doesn't work, you try again. When that doesn't work, you try again. You don't say, uh, TikTok doesn't work for me, or, or Facebook doesn't work, or YouTube doesn't work. They all work, you're just not working it. Marketing is the oxygen for every successful business. You know, the biggest question I get is marketing ethical. Oh my God, do you have an iPhone? They marketed to you. Do you have a house? Do you have an apartment? Do you have clothes? Do you have shoes? Everybody is marketed to you. Marketing is unethical if you sell something that hurts people. If you have a passion, a desire to serve people, you create a great product, you're ethic, actually obligated to ethically market because if you build it, they will not come. When you convert sales into service in your mind, you will never sell again. Let me just ask you something. If you had a friend that wanted to quit smoking and you had a process to stop them to get, quit smoking, would you sell them with everything in your desire to get this in their hands so they stop smoking or they stop drinking or they stop gambling? Well, that's the same thing. If you have a product or service that can help impact someone's life, you have to switch your mind, flip it to become service because the only way you could serve that person is to sell them what you have.
People always ask me, how'd you get so successful in so many companies? First off, you don't see all the failures. But the success, the foundation of it is understanding that sales can be service. And if you don't learn how to sell and market ethically and effectively, you don't really have a business. You have a dream, you have a goal. To be an effective entrepreneur or to launch your own product or scale your own product, you have to incorporate sales. And the easiest thing to make sales a part of your life is to make sales a priority. I would say wherever you are in your startup or your company, double or quadruple the amount of effort and energy you put into your sales department and shift them from just selling and bringing in money to impact and results you get for other people. Love what you do so much you feel bad if you don't learn to sell even better. Underdogs are relentlessly resourceful. I want you to think about this and I see this in, in Alex Hermosi's life. So I have to tell you, Again, being a friend, about a year ago, uh, Alex hits me up. He's selling his company. Um, he's selling his company. He says, hey, I, I want to come. Can I come consult with you for a day? And I love doing that for friends. You know, I'm 30, 20-something years older than him, been in business longer. So he jumps on a plane. He comes, him and Layla, his wife come, and we go up. I have a house in upstate Arizona. So we drive up together, and we, we go, and it's a beautiful mountain house and pine trees all over, and view, it's really beautiful. We're sitting out in the back deck, and we're all talking. And he said, and that day, I happened to have someone find my home in Arizona, and they jumped over the fence and knocked on the door. They were just, they were super polite, just kind of creepy, kind of weird, right? Um, that that happens. <laughs> and, and I can only imagine for top celebrities, because I'm surely not a top celebrity, but it, it happened quite often. And he was there and he's like, man, how can you be forward facing and be public? I just want to be successful, make a lot of money, but no one know my name. He said, how could you do that? And I said, well, I made a decision a long time ago, Alex, that if that's how I can impact the world, how I can leave a legacy, how I can love what I do every day and still employ hundreds of people and be an amazing dad and leave a legacy for my kids, if being forward facing allows that impact, then I'm willing to do that. And in that moment, he said, I'm doing it. Now, he went in that year. He's one of the most followed people online now. M million five on YouTube, over a million on Instagram. I mean, he is skyrocketing. Why? Because he made a decision. What, did he have all the resources? Sure, financially. But what he did and what I'm going to share with you is he has found a way since he started on a gym floor to create a company that he sold with lots of zeros at the end to be massively resourceful even if you don't have the resources. Let me ask you something. How many people hit lotto? They got resources. They go broke. Why? Because they weren't resourceful. If you could leave your kids a million bucks or leave them the power of being resourceful, which one would you leave them? I know without a doubt you're saying resourceful. I watch that in Alex's life. The, he's successful now. He has resources and resourcefulness. Oof, you can't touch somebody with both. I promise you right now, you cannot touch somebody with both. But until you have the resources, it's time to be massively resourceful. What Alex did is he studied every single person he could that has done incredible on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram, with a podcast. He found the best practices. That's another thing underdogs do. They learn from people who've already been there. They don't try to figure it out on their own. He learned, he came and spent a day consulting with me and he went to others and others and others and he put together his formula, found a way to be resourceful, shot videos, found things, and now he's one of the most watched people online. That's how you model your business. That's how you model your life. Find people who've already done what you want to do and do what they do. So resourcefulness or resources? Ah, I'll pick resourcefulness every day of the week. As I repeat way too many times, Ogmandino's third scroll, I will persist until I succeed. Well, if you learn from others who have already been there, you are massively resourceful and you continue to persist, there's no doubt that you will succeed to that next level wherever area of your life you so choose. This was basically what Richard Branson told me. He said, but here's the cool part. If it serves you, give a lot of it away. Make a bunch of money, then help people. He has a charity called Virgin Unite. He pays all the bills on Virgin Unite and all the rest of it goes to charity. So it's like, I saw the happiness in his heart. I saw how everything was donated and dedicated to Virgin Unite. And it just made me realize that I need to put my oxygen mask on first. Get yourself secure.
Don't feel bad about wanting to have a foundation that you're okay. If COVID ends in a month or two years, you're okay. If the world shifts again, you're okay. If the opposite um, you know, president gets elected, you're okay. Fix the economy in your home. Fix the mindset in this home. Don't let the wrong people take, g- give you bad advice to steer you off track. Don't let the inner villain be in control, the inner self-doubt. And go get yours. Go make an impact. Go make the money. Go launch the business, scale the business, or momentum that business through the freaking roof. Shift because the world is shift. Stay involved in a group like this. Be here. Take the knowledge. And then your oxygen mask is on. And then you get to help whoever you want. You get to impact lives. You get to make a difference. And um, we get to live into our full potential. And isn't that the... Isn't that the greatest thing that we could say at the end of our lives? How to thrive in business online in today's very crowded world. There's so much online. You get on your phone, you are just scrolling nonstop and you see ad after ad. What makes someone stop? What makes you stand out? What allows you to earn the trust of someone to give you money, to say yes to you, to work with you, to hire your company or gets them to buy your book? I don't know what your business is, but obviously, Obviously, you're online or unless say, you live someplace remote and you rent jet skis. I don't know. But what I see building value in advance more than ever before in history. Pace Morby teaches people how to invest in real estate. Before that, he did hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate transactions. So he wasn't a guy that just decided to teach it. He is the real deal. And then he decided to teach. He just wanted to serve. He didn't know how to enter this industry. He didn't know what Tony and I have been doing for almost 70 years between us. How to sell what you know, how to impact others. He just started helping. And people were saying, no, 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 you're giving away too much. It's too much work. He was building value in advance without realizing. He was building reciprocity. He was building a community of people who appreciated him, who knew and trusted him because he did more for them in advance without asking for anything. And when he did, they surely wanted everything he had. So I want you to think about this. Have you watched a webinar in the last year of your life in a webinar, a 90 minute uh, presentation that makes an offer. I, I'm not knocking webinars. I, I've done webinars for 20 plus years. But have you ever watched a webinar that was so just the pitch and you didn't gain any value? By the time you got to the offer, you either bought it because you wanted the product or were mad that you wasted 90 minutes of your life. Guilty, been there, have sat through those and been frustrated at the end. It's one of the reasons we do five-day challenges and we do five-day free events and we do make an offer during those in most all cases after we earn respect, after we deliver massive value. I want to tell you this, we, we've been in this so long, watching what Pace, what Pace reminded me of is so many of you are asking for money. You're asking for the purchase without delivering value in advance. When you do, say, a webinar or a sales pitch that doesn't deliver value, when you're done, if you bought, like I said, but if you didn't buy, it's kind of like, oh, it's annoying, and you don't ever do business with that person again. So I want you to think of this frame, and I said it when I was on with Pace, is ripening green fruit. You see, if you do a webinar or you do just a hardcore sales pitch without delivering any value, you're going to get some sales. That's ripe fruit. But all the green fruit are the people that need more data, that want to know, like, and trust you, but you didn't give them enough. They're the green fruit and you just let that die on the vine. Where smart companies go, hey, I'd love to sell to the people that are ready, but I'd love to deliver so much value to those that aren't ready in advance that when they are ready, I'm the person they choose. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more amazing rules from Brendan Burchard, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.
The habits that everyone wants to talk about in the popular literature or books is like, you know, these small habits or atomic habits or automatic habits or unconscious habits. Those are valuable. Those are very important. But high performance requires deliberate habits. A deliberate habit